Hello everyone, I'm back. I hope you all are there with me. All of you just show me a thumbs up if you all are there with me. Okay, that's good. So let's start. We have already covered, uh, we have discussed the uh, fundamental concepts of identity and access management. We have tried to cover a uh, few concepts related with module one. Now it's time to go and do some laps. Okay, so I'm just sharing my screen. Okay, so very first thing when you are starting with Azure Active Directory. So here, uh, first you need to make sure that you are having admin rights. Then only you can access this admin center and you need to set up the trial account. Like if you guys, uh, of course, in your real organization environment, you would not be able to explore the capability of Azure Active Directory. So here you can create the uh, trial account. I have already shared the link for the same. You can create a trial account for Office 365 E3. Once With E3, you can go for Azure Active Directory Premium P1 license. Again, that Premium P1 license, you will get it free for trial for one month. So you can explore that. Now, when we are all there on this portal, the very first thing we will be doing, that is creating users, group, and guests. So let's start with our first lab. Ma'am, could you share that link once again, that E3 trial? We have to buy that a subscription and then we can use Azure Active Directory. See, when you first time set up your trial account, E3 account, then automatically you will get a free version of Azure Active Directory. That is a free license. So when you will jump, okay, I will let you know. First, let me go to the admin center of Office 365. Okay. Okay, so this is my trial environment. This is office.com I have tried. Okay, this is my admin account for this trial environment. taking time. So here you will notice this is my admin account. OK, so by default, when you are going to use the trial account, the very first step when you're going to set up the admin account, by default, the very first account will be the global admin. And you will be having all the go admin rights to explore this portal. So first you need to go to admin so as an admin you will be able to access this option under three dots admin and this is microsoft 365 mm -hmm. admin center so here just go to your extreme left side here you get the option for azure active directory under admin center so you can go and click Azure Active Directory. You will be redirected to Azure Active Directory Admin Center. Or directly you can try this link aad.portal.azure.com. I have already shared the link for the same. 
So when you will be clicking on this link first time, it will ask you for the admin ID. So you need to provide the credentials, okay? And then you need to go to dashboard. Okay. So when you will click on dashboard, the very first thing you will notice the type of license you are having for Azure Active Directory. So here you will notice I am having premium P2, but the very first time when, when you will be coming on this dashboard, you will be having the free version, okay, or the default one, the basic one. And at the top, you will get the option to upgrade yourself for Azure ADM Premium P1 license. Like this is E5, that's why I am getting P2. But in your case, you will be working with E3, you will be getting option for P1. Just by clicking on that option, you would be able to upgrade yourself for P1. Okay, that is again free of cost. Along with that trial account, you will get the free access for Azure AD Premium P1 license. So when you are here on this portal, so the very first thing we are going to do to create users. OK, because of course, when you are going to work with identity access management, you need to have some users to in your environment. So when I'm clicking on users. So here. in my account and in this free trial you can create 25 users okay so let me just create a new user for that just click on new user here you will get option to create new user or invite external user i will click on create new user OK. So now again, you will get the option to invite a user. OK, invite a guest, a new guest user to collaborate with your organization or to create a new user. So as we are creating user for our environment, I will click on create user. Now here under identity, you need to give the name like right now. You will notice I'm having this domain. This is my default domain provided by the Microsoft that is on Microsoft.com. But if you have your custom domain, you can. List of custom domains here. So right now this is the default one only I'm using. Here you give to you have to give the name of the user. So I'm using. I'm taking this name only. I hope I don't have any user with the name. So this is test SC 300. I will make it the with same. With your default domain, which you have created it first time, which you have delivered. Uh, correct. When the very first time you are going to set up your account. Okay. Microsoft.com, this default domain will be given to you. But just to make it unique, you need to give some custom domain additionally, like it will be added along with the domain one. So here I have mentioned comma.chm.microsoft.com. But this is again not the custom domain. This is the default domain I'm using. Got it? As it's a trial one, of course, we are not going to use the custom domain. We need to work with the default domain. OK, so I am given the name. And. Test. SC 300. Now scroll down. This is the option for password. So here it will ask you whether you want to have auto generated password or let me create the password. See whatever the option you are going to choose as an administrator. When you want okay, uh, any auto generated password will work, you can go. But if you want 
to have any uh, custom password like as common custom password like uh, test user one two three or test user at the rate one two three. So that will be the common password you can create. But once you are going to create identity and the end user is going to have use this account, he will be asked to change his password. Got it? Though admin has created the password, but whenever user is going to access his account first time, he will be asked to change his password. Okay. So of course this password will not be the. Uh, Uh, that uh, this will only the temporary one. Okay, so here I am just giving uh, one test password. I'm making this test. Okay, so here when you are going to put a uh, password, you have to see uh, it should be the lowercase, uppercase, number, and a symbol, and at least the length should be eight. So accordingly, I have made this password. This is the area where if you want this user to be the part of any group, you can select it. You will get the list of groups available in your organization. Just select that group and user will automatically become the part of that group. So right now I'm not going to give any group to this user. And here you will notice the role of the user. So here. By default, whatever the user will be created will be having not going to have any admin role. But at the time of creation only, if you want to allot any role to him, like application administrator, authentication administrator, uh, then you have a user administrator, help desk administrator. You can assign that role here only. I'm just skipping this part. Now here. Uh, this is the setting for the signing that is block signing. Means you have created the identity, but right now you do not want user to sign in. Later on, when you want to activate it, it will be activated. So, if the, uh, block it. I'm just keeping it no. Then it is important to put the user location. Like I am from India, I will put India. Job info. Just if you want to give any job information, you can put. I'm just skipping this part. Man, group if you want to the, select man, group and user, you have we can keep it default. We can keep it default. And group and user means uh, this roles roles group and roles is there. Na? Any group to him. Yeah. So I have right now. I have not allotted any group. That's why I'm just keeping it default. Okay, okay. but in okay. your case, at the time of creation only, if you want to allow any group, you can. So dynamic group, we can create it. Yes, that is a different process. Okay, okay. we will discuss that later. So right now groups, then job information. I'm just again skipping this part and click on create. These attributes we can manage again as well. Attribute means what attribute? It's what are the properties we have uh, specified for the user. We can add, mm -hmm. add, miss, add as per the user. Yes, you can custom later on if you want, you can change it. No problem. No option. No, if I want to add the role of the user or something. Uh -huh. Then uh -huh. how we can miss. How we can add this attributes See, like. right now we are just creating a user. See right now we are just creating a user. Okay. okay. As I told if you want to add a role you can add here. But right now I am not allotting any role that I will cover in a different lab. Got it? Okay. No problem. Okay. So once it is done just click on create. I got the message successfully created user. I will just find out that user. Okay, 
Okay, so I have test SC300. Just click on it. Now here you will notice I have the detail of this user now. This is the overview. The user principal name. This is what the user principal name. This is the login ID. Is added as a member. No role is assigned. No application is assigned. No member. He is not provided any group membership. No license is provided to him. It is done. Now, at this left side, you can have the setting to manage this user, like to assign the role or to any administrative unit or to any group, application, license, and so on. As I have just created this user, I'll click on the license. You will notice there is no license signed found. When you have not provided any license to him, user would not be able to access any resources in this environment. So for that, we will assign license. Now, when I click on assign license, I will be having list of the licenses. Out of these license, as per the requirement of the current user, you can select. So I am selecting the Microsoft 365 E5 developer. Now here it is giving me option. So when I'm selecting E3 developer, these all are the different services along with this license will be provided to user. Now this is the time as an admin, if you want to restrict user to access any particular Uh, for example, Skype for Business Online or Whiteboard or Yammer or any other service, just unclick it. Like, for example, I'm not clicking it for Yammer. So, user will not be allowed to use Yammer. Though it is a part of E5 license, but as an administrator, I am restricting user to use it. Similarly, for example, in my organization, user do not need Power BI. So, I will not provide Power BI access to user. That is done. Uh, you can just check whether this assignment. So now you will notice under license, this license is assigned to this user. So let's just check whether user is able to access his identity or not. In in a incognito mode. I will just simply copy his user principal name.
password that is that was set up by admin so as a user when i am trying to sign in mm -mm. what happened So now the first time when I am logging as a user, it will ask me to update my password. So this is the time as a user I am going to update my password. First I need to put current address, current a password. Now the new password will will be set set by me. Now, once I have logged in successfully, I have reset the password. Now, my organization wants me to follow this method to just proof or to have some more information from my side so that my account can be more secure. So here, if you want to set up your phone right now, it is not forced actually. It is recommended just so if you want, you can set up your phone number here. OK, but if you want to skip, just skip this setup. You can do it later. So that is done. Now, if you have not assigned any license to user, user will not get any uh, app access here. This area will be blank. And again, by clicking on this nine dots, this is the app launcher. The app here, but as I have already assigned a license, he is able to access these app here. But if you will notice, he is not getting the option to enter admin center. Why? Because he is just a user, not a admin role as he, uh, he is not provided any admin role. So this is done. So now we will just try to create a group for a user. So for group, right now we have just started. Uh, we have done this exercise: how to create a user and how to assign a license to him. This time you need to go and select groups. Now here you need to click on new group. Now when you will select here, you will get the option to select the group type. So when you will click here, you will get two type of group. First is security and Microsoft 365 group. Anyone who can just let me know what is the difference between the security group and Microsoft 365 group. OK, I will let you know. See when I have selected security. You can see the setting. It is asking me the group name and group description. Now, for example, I am selecting Microsoft 365. Now you will notice when I have selected of Microsoft 365, it is asking me the group name. 
see enter the name of the group and group email address means when you are selecting group type Microsoft 365, this group will be having a email address. Got it? But when it is a security group, I get to this group. This is the difference between Microsoft 365 and security group. So right now I'm just selecting Microsoft 365 group and group is SC 300. Membership type, is it assigned or dynamic user? So I'm keeping it assigned. And click on create. But if you want to make it a dynamic group, then you can click it dynamic user. Then when you are clicking it as a dynamic user, you need to fire the add the dynamic query and members will be added dynamically, whatever the query you will be creating. So here when you have added a uh, dynamic query, you will get this type of window here where you can configure the rule for the same. Like for example, here you can add the expression. Dynamic means in the sense. Uh... Dynamic means you are not selecting users for the group. You are just creating a rule and that rule will be applied and whoever the user comes in that criteria will be automatically added to this group. So uh, for clear? creating, yes, yes. For creating it, dynamic rule is uh, we have to create and for removing that user, again, we have to create dynamic rule. See, generally we create this dynamic rule to add the user, not to not remove to, it. Okay. Okay. So automatically when user do not comes in that criteria, he will be removed. Got it? Okay. No, I'm saying that the users which 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 have which has been added by using this rule, uh, mm -hmm. we have to remove that user manually or automatically it will be removed. You have to remove from the group. group okay. If you want to remove from the group, you are asking me? Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, I thought that we have to create again new rule to remove that user which. Okay, which no. Yeah. So as it's a, if you really have the requirement that you want to manually add and remove the user, I recommend you not to add the dynamic users. Okay, you can add them manually or you can do, you can add. Uh, you okay. okay. And uh, just directly assign the role to them. Okay. So okay. for example, here, if you have the property like user, if you want to make it as a user type, like for example, I am selecting user type is equal to group or member. So for example, I am adding it as a member. So whoever are the members, the guest like for example I'm making it for guest. So automatically that whoever user the type is guest will be the part of this group. So this is a scenario you can take. Okay. So right now I'm just not creating this rule for this uh, group. I will let you know how to manually add the members. But this is how you can create the rule. This is for and and or expression you can use. This is for the property, property of the user. Here you can see there are different properties of the user like account is enable or not, disable or not, or account is disable, any display name, any object ID like user object ID is null. If the object ID is null, he will be the part of this group. He, if user belongs from this particular city, if user belong from this particular country or a department, Accordingly, you can make the dynamic group. You will keep on adding a user and just mention that uh, the department. So whenever a new user will be added with that particular department, automatically user will become the part of this. Group. Any question, any query?
no guest in this rule only guest users will be added in this dynamic group. right right so the correct query i have applied this is for guest but i am not going to uh, save this query okay i am not making a dynamic group i will let you know how to manually just create the group so here membership assigned so now users will be manually added to this group so here it is asking me the members so i am selecting members now here i have the list of users who are a part of my organization i will just keep on selecting i will use my test user now who should be the owner of this group so i am selecting owner so owner will be the current test user that i have created i have added it as a own this is done and create so similarly if you want to create security group the group will be added as a and create so this is how we have just created a group and the difference between the normal group office 65 groups and security group is just with office 65 you will be having email id and difference between the normal group and dynamic group is that in the dynamic group membership uh, will be assigned as per the dynamic rule whatever you will create for that group okay so now i will go back and in my next exercise i will let you know how to add guest user so now here when you will click on new it will directly ask you to create user as a invite like you want to invite external user now here see you will notice this invite user option is clicked you need to give the name of that person for example uh, this is for the guest user perfect now here i am adding new guest and here for example i am putting abc at the rate gmail first name first if you want to give him any message you can give if you want him to become the part of any group you can make him or any role if you want to assign you can same all the setting will be same user location that's it now here you will not get the option to create but to invite just click on invite now when you will click on invite on this email id sorry it is created but whatever the id you have created it may be yahoo it can be gmail it can be any email id any external identity provider you can give the email id and on that email id only that guest user will be getting a link that link will be to access your environment now user will be able to access that environment along with his email id 
So now you will notice I have few guest members here. So this is the new guest I have added. OK, so whenever he will be accessing. See right now that was just the test email ID I have added. But if it would be the real email ID, the user will be accessing the link on that email ID. So this is just a very simple step as you are creating new users. Similarly, you can add any external user in your environment and that user will be added as a guest. Now here you can have the overview for the same. Right now again, no license is assigned to you. If you want the same way we have guest. OK, so we have covered the first lab where we have got to know how to create user, how to create, how to invite a guest user, how to create a group, how we can go and create security group and what is the difference between dynamic group? And we have discussed how to create the dynamic query rule. So any questions so far for this topic? Or for this lab? And next we will be moving for. the role assignment part. OK, so now just click on Azure Active Directory. Once the user is created. License is assigned. Now the next important thing is to assign the role. So for assigning the role, you have two way. Uh, or I, I will say three way. First, while creating the user, you were directly able to add the role. Second, here you consider option under manage section just click on it here you will notice i have a list of roles okay this is a list of role now for example i want to make this user a group uh, sorry a guest inviter role just select it okay so now here you will notice you are getting three options. First, eligible assignment and active assignment. Now difference between eligible assignment is that when you are clicking on eligible assignment, user is eligible for this role. OK, eligible in the sense he is. He will be. Whenever it is needed. OK. He want to assign uh, sorry for example he want to give invite to any guest and he want to use this role but he is eligible it but doesn't mean he would be able to access this role anytime no he need to ask permission for the same that yes I want to use this role this mean eligible or you can say this is what the control access though you are providing any role but in a But when you are selecting active assignment, it means this role will be immediately active and user can use this role immediately. Now just click on active assignment. Add assignment. Now here. Resource is there. Resource type. The role is there. Role uh, scope type. OK. And here you will get the option to select. 
the member. Now here you need to just select the member. I will select a user that I have just created. Assignment means membership. Correct. You are going to assign this role to this member. OK. So here I have this user SC 300. And select. Click on next. Now here when you will click on next, you will be jumped to this privilege identity management. This privilege identity management is a part of P2 license. OK, so this privilege identity management means here again you can control the access on a particular role. So here again you can select whether the assignment type should be eligible or active. If you are making it active. You have. Permanently eligible or to assign this role for a limited time period. So here, for example, I'm not making it permanent. So what I can do, I can assign this role and you can define the start and end date. For example, if it is starting from two days, two day date. And it ends to. For example. December, I will make it for December 15. Uh, uh, provide the justification test. That's it. And click on assign. This is privilege identity management. Yes, that is privileged identity management. Uh, you have allocated this role for a specific time period. For a specific time period, right. Why? Because in organization, when we are providing admin access to any user, it so user is given provided any access, any role. If you are making it limited, it is totally secure. Like you can make it for three months. If it is required, you can extend the period. It is the only purpose of privilege identity management. OK. So this is how you can assign the role. I will just refresh it. So here you will notice when you will go to that particular role, you will get the. To have assigned this role. Now the same way. If you will go and click on users. Right now, uh, the previous option we have opted for the assignment of role that was if at a time you can give this role to multiple user, you can just keep on selecting. But if you want to give it as per user like user wise. So for that you can go and select that user. Like for example, I'm selecting that current user only. Now here you will notice I am having apps access. you are in detailing part of any particular user go to assigned role. Now here just click on add assignment. And this time you will notice member is selected, but I have to select the role. So I am selecting the role this time that is. User administrator. This is done. Click on next. Now again you will be landed to privilege identity management that is PIM. Here again you can make it eligible or active. And if you want to make it permanently assigned, you can make it. Just give the justification and click on assign. You have taken eligible or active. I have taken active. OK. So 
so this is active right now okay so i think we should go and test whether you this user is able to access this role or not so for that i can go to this user so now you will notice this user is going to have this option to i will click on admin okay so now here user is able to access admin center but again he would be only able to access only those rules which is assigned under the user administrator so for that i will be clicking on azure active directory Let me just click on users. okay so as a user administrator now this user can manage all the setting related with you including if he want he can reset the password for uh, limited admins too so here let's just try whether he can change the password for any user or not so for that if uh, okay i have this user for example this user has forgot his password so now you will notice here he is getting this option to reset the password now here i am having option to reset the password with this email id the password has been reset now he can copy this password and he can share it with this employee and that employee would be able to log in again in his uh, in his environment so this is how you can uh, use this role and assign to any user i will go back to my trial account now as we are just working like we have tried assigning role and working on that role uh, with the default roles which is already there in this environment 
but for example if this rule doesn't source are neat in that case you can con rule and administrator and here you will get the option to create a new rule just click on that new rule new custom rule now here i will use uh, that is sc 300 custom rule now it is asking me do you want to make a clone from custom rule i do not want to know make it i will want to uh, start it from scratch click in on next it is asking me to search for the permissions so i am making it for handling the credentials so here i will be typing yeah, so here i am having credentials related information so here uh, So here I will be using this custom rule for application dot my organization credentials update. So with this rule, user would be able to update the credentials of the organization application. So here you will notice this is what credentials on single directory application. Or if you want to update the credentials of service principal or to update the application credentials accordingly, you can create the role. So I will just click on next and create. My this role is assigned, uh, is created. Now I will just click on it. And the same way you were assigning other rules, you can assign this custom rule to any user. Any questions so far? Anyone, any doubt? Uh, uh, Shri Devi, when you are choosing eligible, you, when you are making any user eligible for this role, means uh, it is not you are scheduling it. Okay, you are not scheduling it. You are making him eligible to use this role, but whenever he will try to use this role, he need to ask for the permission. Got it? When the permission is provided, he would be able to access this role. But if you want to schedule when he can, when it can become active, when it should be started, when it should be ended, then you need to identity management. That comes under assigning the role, not eligible. I hope it is clear, Shri Devi. Okay. Okay, so now next we are going to. Uh, okay, so in an. So for that, I will click on administrative unit. It is under Azure Active Directory manage section. Now here you need to add a new administrative unit. I will give name. Test. Name I have given. You can give the description. Next. What role you want to assign for this unit? So for example, this role is for uh, this is for team administrator. 
now you need to add assignment who are the part of this particular unit so now this is the time you can add like for example i am making it for departments or i am making it for as per the location so if you remember like if we were having the dynamic query so we can make a query that users from delhi location automatically there will be the rule for them and they will be having in a group got it now you can use that group while creating administrative unit okay and automatically that all user will be there or for a particular group who will be the admin of that particular administrative unit depends so this role is applicable to this yes, administrative using unit this users so you are you are uh, assigning this role to the all members uh, coming under this administrative unit see i am i am using these employees who are going to manage this administrative unit with this particular role okay i hope you are getting yes so these two user will manage this particular unit with team admin the role the, and these two users will be hmm. yes so any member if we will attach suppose emp emp2 emp1 and 2 are uh, having this team administrator role to manage this administrative unit suppose if i want to add another emp3 another third user mm -hmm. then again mm -hmm. this third user will be able to manage this administrative unit and right. get this role right correct okay. you can like oh, as per your requirement if your question. unit is really large mm -hmm. yeah. okay suppose i am creating one administrative unit and assigning teams administrator role mm -hmm. and that is for some location but when we create a team that is not for a location right so how mm -hmm. is that distinguished mm -hmm. that which teams can be managed by this administrative unit mm -hmm. so again it's up to your requirement you can make it this administrative unit you can make uh, as a department depend how you want to make generally we make administrative unit for a particular location or for particular department yeah i am uh, saying that i am going with that so i create the administrative unit for a location okay mm -hmm. but i am giving a role of teams administrator okay so when we create a team it is not for a location right so how is it managing the teams for a location how no no how see if if you have a team where uh, all the members like for your entire organization or if you are from another unit so these people will be only managing of delhi unit like i am making this administrative unit for delhi location so they will be managing only for daily employee are you getting so my point it means uh, it, they will manage the team for the user who are part of daily location right so it goes down to the user right? purpose of making administrative unit like right now i have just added a user for example i am making it one more time this is this is a test user okay like right now this user is able to reset the password of any user who are a part of my organization but mm -hmm. i do not want this user to change the password for entire organization people this employee should work only for a particular unit or particular department In which department in that, that will be, case, will I will be, be creating through dynamic group or something, right? That will be second selection. Yes, you can make it. In that you case, you can make the part uh, of. Komal, please mm -hmm. continue. In that case, what you do? This test three, test SC three hundred is managing entire part, and you wanted to manage only this administrative unit. What you will do in this case? Mm -hmm. So that's what I am making. so right now i have made this administrative unit 
I have added the role and I have added the user. So just I have added it. Next review and create. So now here this is the name team administrator. Or I think I should just go and change for user and setter so that I can let you know how it changes actually. Just a minute. And I'm making it for user and setter. So we have the liberty to create, uh, to assign role uh, under mm -hmm. that administrative unit. Suppose there are 10 members under that administrative unit. It is up to us mm -hmm. that we will assign which uh, we will assign uh, role to each member or only to particular member under that administrative unit. So like you have just observed, I have created this administrative unit. Then I have mentioned few roles like two roles, one for a team administrator, one for user. And there only yes. I am adding the people who are managing this role under this unit. I hope you are asking the same thing. Uh, yes, but it's not completely clear to me. Uh, this you you have taken SC test SC 300 for teams administrator as well as for user administrator. What about EMP1 and EMP2 users? Actually, I have removed them. Why? Because I am going to make. I want to test it too, whether it is really working or not. So here I, I am having this user in my case. This is the test user. Okay. But it just for testing purpose, just to show you the result. I have added this user only. OK. Got it? That's why I have removed EMP one and. E okay. But how are you okay. mapping so this administrative to... unit to the location? Where, where is that? <laughs> See, ma'am, uh, let me just complete myself. Then you oh, will be able okay. to understand this lab. Sure. OK, this lab is not completed yet. OK, OK, Thanks. so in the very right. first step. In the very first step, what we have done? We have just made a administrative unit. OK, mm -hmm. now for example, uh, let's see. Let's assume this is SC 300 or for example, this is. A Komal Delhi unit, OK, for example. So this administrative unit I have made for my Delhi guys. Got it? OK, so now in this Delhi unit, just assume this is not SC 300. This is Delhi unit in this Delhi unit. What I have done? I have made a user administrator and the name of the user is test uh, user SC 300. OK, now he is managing this unit with the role user administrator. My this unit is ready. Now the next. Next is you are going to make a group for S uh, for Delhi people. Of course, when you are making the sense Delhi unit means there must be some people who are a part of Delhi. So here you can add them as a group. So in your organization, like we have just discussed how to create a group as per the location. So whatever the group you have made as per the Delhi location, just simply add that group. Simple. OK, OK, like for example, mm -hmm. here I have this 300 SC 300. For the location and I will just select it. So the members under this group uh, is also having access of teams administrator or only the initial one. Sorry, only the member of that group. 
this demo group which you are adding it uh, mm -hmm. the member of this group is also having that role access no, or no, not no 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 only the only... initial test user yes this okay. sc300 who works for my organization yeah got it so here for example i am adding member if you want you can add users to for example i am using this employee he is from delhi employee 2 is from delhi and select and this group whoever user are a part of this this query comes in that delhi location okay so these users or user of that group are not having admin access they are only the part of my delhi unit but okay. the very first step when we were creating administrative unit that time i have created a role and i have assigned that role only that person is a admin that person is going to okay. manage these users and these groups got it under this administrative unit yes and the test sc300 is the yes uh, person right we've managing this is the demo group yes the yes. test sc300 is uh, only the admin for this people not the whole organization no 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 so that's what i am going to check now mm -hmm. so now after this exercise now my that user should not be able to change the password for other employees that's what my other purpose end. is okay so let's just so i am going back to this user so let's just try for this user Now you will notice, as this user is not a part of the Delhi unit, okay, or that so-called our SC three hundred administrative unit. So this user here, he is getting the message: the password cannot be reset. This may be due to an incorrect level of administrative privilege. I hope you all are getting my point now. Yes. The purpose of administrative unit. so now i have controlled the role of that user that only for limited group for limited unit user would be able to change the password not for entire organization but this test sc300 i remember that Does you have anyone any the, doubt yeah I, i am saying that at sc300 test sc300 you have given teams administrator and user administrator role right then why so under that user reset the password no why because this this user is not a part of that group na or this I have administrative selected. unit this user is not a part of this unit okay no where i have mentioned the name of this user okay so the users which are part of that administrative unit only those users uh, password can be reset or Changed by this S C S S C three hundred. Right. Okay. Right. That was the purpose of creating administrative unit. You are segregating uh, with reference to their location. Like in the morning, if you remember, I have right. So here, if you will notice, this is the diagram. So this user is only going to reset the password of this unit. Now, okay. whoever user who comes under unit two, three, and four. this user cannot reset the password for these units users got, got it. it yes thank you so similarly i have made only one unit you can make another unit for your another location or another department okay so i hope this administrative unit part was done 
uh, we have tried uh, with uh, with the diagram i have uh, tried to uh, uh, give you the understanding okay with the explanation part and with the lab so now let's just move on to the another topic so as we are not having enough time so i just quickly want to complete all the labs related with model 1 all the concept we have already cleared so now we are going to uh, work with mfa that is multi factor authentication so for multi factor like right now when my new user when he was trying to log into his environment he was only typing the password and he was able to enter in the environment but in my organization i want user should go for another factor of authentication for accessing the service or accessing the resources in the environment okay so for that i need to enable mf so now here there are three way as i told in the morning that you can directly enable mfa by enabling i am going to property under this property we have already explored the tenant property and here you have this you have already uh, observed this setting that is security default when you will click on security default enable by default fault enforced in your organization but this will be enforced to everyone to the entire organization got it but if you do not want to do so you do not want everyone to go for multi factor authentication in that case you can assign multi factor authentication as per user so for that what you can do just click on users Now here you will notice i am having option for per user mfa you can just click on that option now here you will be landed for multi factor authentication this is a list of the user in your environment you can have a look the status of multi factor authentication by default it is disabled but for few people it is enable like uh, for this employee then uh, i think no other employee okay yes so it is enable right now for one employee if you want to make it enable for the current user that you have added like uh, where is my user so sc300 test user just i am clicking on it and here i am having option to enable it just click on enable enable multi factor authentication and close set Now here, if you want to filter it out, like if you want to view only the sign-in allowed user, billing administrator, or any particular administrator, like for example, I want to enable uh, multi-factor authentication only for administrator, or only the person who is global administrator. So accordingly, you can filter it out. You see the status of multi-factor authentic authentication, like wherever it is enabled. so i will see that only two people are under this criteria so for example i am selecting this user now here you will get the option to manage user setting i will just click on manage user setting so here you will uh, notice a uh, required selected user to provide contact method or delete all existing app password generated by the selected user 
or to restore multi factor authentication on all recommended devices so as set the setting right now i'm just clicking on cancel so right now if you want you can again like if it is enable you can enforce this user to go for multi factor authentication so i think we should just go back to our this uh, user and let's just test whether he asked for multi factor authentication or not uh mandar uh, can you please let me know what you want me then multi factor authentication are you asking about multi factor authentication mandar uh, yes ma'am okay so for that what i have just done when you are in that azure active directory user list here at the top go to the extreme right you will get the option to per user mfa got it okay excellent thank you yeah. so as i have already enabled it for my test user i will just test it so for that i just have to log off first and then we'll try login so now you will notice as you have set up multi factor authentication so of course now this user is forced to set up a different method of authentication so like last time we were getting option to skip this part but this time compulsory he need to set up the another method of authentication so here i am just uh, adding my contact number here I have just received a code. Now, with this verification, my phone number is registered. Another method. so here you can set up microsoft authenticator app to set this account so oh, here you are getting option to set a different method as a user so just click on it let's just explore so here whatever the options are added by your organization by your admin so as a admin i can choose the method like uh, email text message authenticator app whatever the option i want to give like only i want to make it for text user will not that's why this user is getting option so i can set uh, for example authenticator app only i will just confirm to connect here it is asking me to set up my account in microsoft authenticator connect now here i need to scan this code via this mobile 
so let me just add uh, microsoft authenticator app in my mobile so this is how i can add this account Okay, so from my personal mobile, I have added this account successfully. This is done. I have approved from my mobile app. The notification approved. I have clicked on next and done. So right now what I have done, I have set up the method. Got it as it was not set up. So right now I have just set up the multi-factor authentication method. First, it can be via mobile or second Microsoft Authenticator. Done. Now I have to sign in. So now I am finally able to access my account after the multi-factor authentication. So we have just explored this option per user MFA. Now here when you will go to particular user here again, you will get the message for uh, option for authentication method. Just select it. This is for employee to this employee. So if you want to go uh, employee wise, you can. So you can add authentication method for this particular employee. Similarly, you can do for any other employee in your organization. So here you just need to choose the method like this user will be only accessing this authentication method while authentication. So here you need to provide the mobile number and the type of mobile and all this. This is how his method will be set up the same way we have just added for our test user. Now as I admin, let's just explore some more security options. Under the secure team, uh, I'm going to have this authentication method first. So now here you can set up the multi-factor. Uh, so here you can set up the authentication method. So here, like right now, you will notice this text message. of authenticator it is targeting one user and similarly you have these authentication method and you can set a user for that type of authentication method like for example i want to set it for multi-factor authenticator Now here, whether you want to enable it right now or you do not want to enable, so I'm keeping it enabled. That's why the user while setting up the authentication method, they were getting the list of authenticator app. 
okay so now you can mention whether you should target to all the user or to selected user so here if you want to target it for the all the user you can click on all user so i am just going back we'll show you another method similarly it is for text message uh set it for all the user or for the selected user here you can add user and group just select the group wherever you want to apply just for example this employee and select and save so this authentication method now it has added for employee too now i have very uh, again important feature that is i want to show you one very important feature yeah this is for password reset okay so now why what is actually self service password reset see you might have observed like uh, in your organization if you forget the password like uh, we need to reset the password maybe because i have forgot the password or it may be because i have i have uh, this uh, like someone has uh, guess my password or when i was typing the password someone has noticed what i have passed so just to remove this threat what i can do i can reset my password but in that case you need to ask your administrator to uh, please reset my password but just for example till the time your password is not reset or you have not got the new password for that time period you are not productive means you are not able to work in that case you know uh, it it will just hamper your work so every time or in in like uh, for administrator point of view again just you know resetting the password of someone is a kind of headache better you can use this service that is self service password reset enable when you are going to make it enable in that case user would be able to reset the password their own like if i have forgot my password or if i need to and i can just quickly just clicking on the reset option i can reset my password so you can enable it for all the users right now like it is enable for all the users if you want to make it for selected users so just click on selected you can select the group like here you will get the option to select the group like you can make it for admins you can make it for a group of user so it will be applied to only those group of users and that user would be able to reset their password there now here you have the authentication method like when user is trying to change the password he need to go for the additional method of authentication so here you can set the number of method which is required to reset the password right now it is set up for one when it is one so whether he should go for email or for mobile phone if you want that user should be asked for two time like to authenticate himself while resetting the password so you can set two methods 
so this is how you can go for password in your organization any questions so far anyone any doubt yes anyone any question any doubt so far uh, the self service uh, password reset mm -hmm. hello uh, is that uh, i mean by default it is uh, disabled or enabled see by default it is disabled but if you want you can enable it to everyone right on a particular user you can do it okay anyone else any other question so let's just explore uh, password protection so i will click on all service i will click on azure ad password protection now when you are here in this password protection means like uh for example generally like as a user we want to set the password which is easy to remember <laughs> like uh, like in in our case like what we think uh if i mean you forget it so generally what happens we keep our phone number our date of birth our family member name or any colleague's name or our friend name as a password but when we are making it easy for us to remember the password it is easy to guess for the person who is trying to access your password unauthorized way got it so some password someone can guess your password very easily he can guess yes yes this is your password this may be your password it may be your a birth date it can be your uh, it can be your family members name of course it would be in that case you can make your uh, password protection policy for your organization so here you have the setting related with the same like here you can have the custom smart lockout threshold like if user is trying to guess a wrong password it should be allowed for 10 times like in many cases you might have observed some apps if you have typed wrong password it will give you uh, only three limitations like only three times after that the account will be locked like especially when you are using your bank account and when you are using that app in that app if you have put wrong password give you uh, of a message that you have tried one time you have two more limit left similarly you can set the threshold value and here lockout duration like if this do this threshold is done this limit is done after that your account should be automatically lock so this is for the security point of view if any unauthorized person is trying to access your account of course you as a user will not keep on just trying and guessing your password because reset the password or i will ask my admin but any unauthorized person will keep on guessing your password so you have to limit that you can make this as a two or or for example i can make it three only three time he can guess the password or it is possibility that only user is going to type uh, there can be some typing mistake okay so in that case i am giving it for three and once the three time it is done locked it should be locked for 60 second it should be locked for it is just depend on you you can mention the duration in seconds then here you can make a list of custom band password means if you have this list means user in your organization will not be able to pick this password as a password for their account it can be like this is a common password like you can see in my screen 
this is the common password people try to pick it for their account or you can make it like for your uh, your organization name like my name is organization my organization name in xyz so it may be the possibility that users are using that name stuff custom bad password here then here you can enable password protection on windows server active directory too if it is yes it will be enabled there now if you want to enforce it right now you can enforce or if you want to make it in a audit mode you can make it once it is done just click on save this banned password list is it the exact match or contents type of company yeah, of course it's the exact match Exactly. Okay. And the last thing we are going to cover that is uh, your identity protection. So for that, again, I will go back to all services. So under this identity protection here you have two most, impo most important policies that is user risk and sign in risk. When it is user risk means user's identity is compromised. So when his identity is compromised he will be required password change. Okay means he need to change his password and when there is sign in, in that case means uh, someone is trying to guess the password okay or it can be any uh, any any impossible location or impossible travel so in that case user may be required for the multi-factor authentication so when there is user risk in that user risk you can include like especially this is for admins right like admins they may have the user risk like their identities can be compromised in that case you can include those That there is a high risk then only this risk policy should be applied and once it is done how you are going to control this risk by giving the access with password change yes, whenever the identity is compromised user need to change the password and when it is sign in risk again you can put the user you can define uh, whether it should be enforced when it is a medium risk or above or for the lower level risk accordingly you give them access with multi-factor authentication. Once it is done, uh, you can see the report of your risky user. If any uh, user who was in risk, like his identity was in risk. So here you can notice like if there was any sign in from the impossible location and all that all you can see here. So this is all the reporting part. If you want to download the report, you can download it. So this is a reporting area. That's it from my side. So I tried my level best to give you the understanding. I just like to quickly share you a few more links that will help you out for the preparation of this SE 300 exams. So here. This is for SE 300 course. I recommend you all to please go through this link. Whatever is there, whatever is covered in SE 300 modules, each and every chapters are given here in detail. There are few sample questions too. Like here, if you will notice, explore identity and Azure AD. There is a proper chapterization. You can explore all the chapters. And once your chapter is done, there is a knowledge check session too. I recommend you all to please go through this before just appearing for the exam. So I'm just sharing the link.
you to go and appear for SC 300 exam, then you can refer this link. Here you can get all the real details related with the SC 300 exam. That how you can schedule this exam. Here how your skills is measured in this exam. And one more very important thing, if you want to cover the lab for SE 300, there is a GitHub link for the same. So whatever the concept I have covered, that is there, you can follow these labs. So here, if you will notice, there are total uh, 828 labs. OK, each and everything is written in a very crystal clear way. Here you will notice like this is lab one. Uh, and resources, how to have the license. So that all is written in a step by step. So you can just go for these labs. And just practice once. So I have shared all the links related with this uh, course. Try to have uh, to access these links, practice the labs, complete the course, and then appear for the exams. And today we have I have just uh, tried to clear the concept related with SC 300. But if you want to take a deep drive and if you want me to cover all the labs uh, in to module four, then you can register for this course. Chetali will be helping you out how to register for the course and then we can have the deep dive for the same that will help you out to prepare for the examination. So thank you everyone. If you have any question, you can put it in the chat box and Chetali over to you. Yes, thank you so much ma'am for the session. Also thanks to all the participants as well for keeping the session interactive. It will be great if you all uh, put your feedbacks in the feedback form. I have given the feedback form link in the chat box. So before leaving, do submit your feedback related to the session. Also, you can put your questions or doubt. So Komal Man can take, uh, take your questions or queries related to the topic. If you have any question or doubt before winding up, please uh, put your questions in the chat box so we can take that questions on it. Thank you, ma'am. Also, for the offers or discount related, uh, what we call the details, I will be putting it in the chat box and the links for YouTube channel or uh, Facebook or LinkedIn, I will be putting in the, in the chat box. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. You all were such a nice audience. You all were very interactive. Thank you everyone. Again, if you have any doubt, any chart uh, query, you can put it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself.